Appreciation Week. And you guys are so kind to join us on our noon Zoom that we're having uh, daily this week. And today's noon Zoom, obviously, as you know, is about fillers, which we're really excited. About. And I'm personally excited about sharing information about fillers with you. This is um, a, a procedure that is near and dear to my heart. And I love it so much because of the change I think it affects in people and the confidence it that follows when you see this positive change in yourself. So I cannot wait to tell you how fillers can help you. But before I do that, I want to kind of go over what's going on this week because we have a ton of things that we're doing to celebrate you. Um, you guys have been with us through 20 years and this week is all about how we can give back to you. So first of all, we are doing these daily noon Zooms and we are having noon Zoom prizes every day. Today's prize is, get ready, free filler. So that's going to be really fun and exciting. At the end, we'll tell you how to enter to win. Um, in addition, we're having 20th anniversary giveaways. So these are available at um, October 20th. It's, we're going to have a live drawing that day. And just by being here, you are automatically entered to win. Our grand prize is a thousand dollar gift certificate. And I hope you win that because that would be great to use on fillers or anything that you desire here at PCA. Um, also on October 20th, our one day skin sale is going on. You save 20% on all skincare products. So I hope you join us for that as well. And we will have a customer appreciation bonus gift available if you purchase over $100. This is kind of like um, our goodie bags that we usually give out on customer appreciation night when we have these live events. Uh, however, they are in limited supply, so you want to order fast on that day. Uh, and then finally, our 20% off customer appreciation gift certificates are on sale now. And these are available just once a year. They're hugely popular. You get 20% off of the face value of these gift certificates. And we are, they are, we opened it yesterday and they're amazed. Like they're, it's just so popular. So I hope you get onto that so that you can get your gift certificate and you can use it all year long. Um, and tell your friends, tell your friends to join our new Zooms, tell them about the contests and also about how they can get their gift certificates. We are giving away this week over $25,000 in prizes, so I'm glad you're here because that means you are going to uh, be entered automatically to win and we'll tell you how to enter to win your free fill at the end of today's noon Zoom. So that was a lot of information and there's a lot of information to follow too when we talk about fillers. And what I want to do today is kind of walk you through a few things. I want to talk first about um, the fillers that we use here at Dermatology Center of Atlanta, what they are, um, and then we're going to kind of go into the aging phase and what happens as we grow up and mature. And then lastly, we'll talk about, of course, how fillers can help you. So I'm going to start with um, fillers. So I've come, these are the fillers that we use here at Dermatology Center of Atlanta. Um, most of our fillers are hyaluronic acid-based. I'm just going to sit because it's easier. Um, the hyaluronic acid based fillers I like because they are temporary fillers. They um, are in our skin naturally. We just lose them as we age. So you're just replacing life with life, which makes sense to me. I also love them because they are reversible. So, you know, a lot of people I find are really nervous the first time that they do fillers and it kind of feels almost uh, claustrophobic because, you know, you're doing this thing and you're putting something in your face. Are you going to like it? And it's nerve wracking, but knowing very easily you can, get out of it if you don't for some reason like it. There's a product called Hyaluronic Dace, which is also an enzyme found naturally in our skin, and you can use that to dissolve it, um, but you won't need to because you'll like it. Um, fillers also, the hyaluronic acid ones, are collagen building, which is awesome. So you actually, with repeated treatments, you can see increased collagen in the skin, which is great too. So some of the results you get to keep, which is fantastic. Um, the fillers that we use all contain lidocaine, which is really important too for comfort. I think um, that's another thing that a lot of patients will say that they get a little bit concerned about, you know, is this going to be uncomfortable? And I think the lidocaine is hugely helpful with that. We also use topical numbing when we um, treat you and that helps a ton as well. However, I will say though, it's actually the whole procedure is a lot more comfortable than, than you think. I think the first time it's important to do the topical numbing. I'll be honest, a lot of my patients who I've been seeing for 20 plus years end up eventually not doing the numbing. So it's really something that I think you'll find very tolerable. Um, so questions I get asked a lot are, what's the difference? There's all these fillers out there. How do I know what you need? First of all, 
You don't ever have to worry about knowing what you need. We're, we're, we help you through that. When we do our consultations, we go through um, different things. And then when you, you know, we tell you how we can use these fillers and how they will help you. But importantly, if you decide, yeah, I want to pull the trigger, I want to, I want to do these fillers, um, you just make a filler appointment. So don't worry about knowing exactly precisely what the filler is you need. We'll help you with that. So these are the different fillers, and the difference between them, you know, we've got Voluma, Velour, Bovella, uh, we use uh, Juvenile Ultra, Ultra Plus, we've got Restylane, Restylane Kiss, which is actually one of our favorite new products for lips. So we've got all these different products, and they all have different properties. Um, these hyaluronic acid fillers, this hyaluronic acid molecule, again, that's that water-loving molecule that's in our skin. Um, depending on the different, um, filler, they'll have different properties, such as their elasticity might be different, the cohesiveness, the molecule size, whether or not they're cross-linked. All these things kind of come together to give each filler its unique gift um, and how we can use it. So depending on what, what this filler, what's in this filler, it will depend on whether or not it can create um, lift, whether the filler can be placed higher in the skin or whether it needs to be uh, placed deeper. Uh, how much projection you'll see with the filler, how much longevity there is. That's another question we get a lot about longevity and how flexible they are. So all of them have different ones. And I kind of liken it to, you know, um, for instance, our, let's call it thinnest filler, the one that we use for the finest, etchiest little lines would be um, Bobella. And our biggest, oldest filler, the one that we would use for the most for projections or to create lift would be Voluma. So sometimes you can interchange them, but you, know, you can't really use the bigger, bolder filler for, to do the thinner work. You could use the thinner filler maybe to do the bolder work, but that's kind of a waste. It's kind of like if you're trying to fill a hole and you can either use a big boulder or a lot of pebbles, it's a lot more efficient to use the boulder than a bunch of little pebbles. So um, we kind of will sometimes figure out what we need to do based on those types of properties. Also in the same area as we go along, sometimes we'll change fillers in the same area because as things improve, you might, going, uh, you might go from needing the the boulder kind of filler up to the maybe a pebble or a small stone filler. So we kind of will evolve it for you as you go. And it's really important, I think, for each and every treatment to evaluate every patient and see what's going on. Um, so next part is really interesting. We're going to talk about probably what you all are wondering. It's like, why, why am I here? You're here because you probably look in the mirror and you see something in yourself that's frustrating you. And the thing that's frustrating you is it could be a lot of different things. I think some of the most common things we see are people complaining about their, maybe their jowls or the folds, these nasolabial folds, these marionettes. Um, so we have all kinds of different reasons of why we're here, but it all kind of comes down to, I will say the aging phase, like things are happening and they're changing. So um, I'm gonna bring out Shelly Schuler, who's our cosmetic physician assistant, and she's gonna kind of talk with me about the aging phase. And we're gonna kind of go over some things and kind of explain to you what's going on. And then we're gonna talk about how the fillers can help. So, Shelly, thanks for coming. Yay. Yay. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Hello, everybody. All right, so you can take your mask off yes. your mic on. Yes. All right, so we're gonna talk about um, fillers. And actually, before we do that, there's a poll up. The po yes, it's a poll. <laughs> it's up and up the whole time. Just now. Okay, so <laughs> let's take the poll. So this is interesting. So the poll is what, um, what is it? The what areas are you most interested? What does it say? In treating with filler. In treating, well, yes, with treating filler. So go ahead and just click, I think you can click as many answers as you want and we'll kind of go to the results of the poll in a little bit. We'll give everyone a minute just to answer that and then we're gonna move on to the aging face. And while we, when we do that, we can kind of pull up um, yeah, so picture yeah, number one and kind of go mm -hmm. through that. Mm -hmm. You're at 77% voting. We'll keep it open for about 10 more seconds. Okay. Alice says about 10 more seconds <laughs> and then you're done voting. <laughs> <laughs> Good answers. Well, I think I am too. We've mm -hmm. never done a poll before, so it's kind of live poll. Yeah, it's kind of exciting. All right. Oh, interesting. You going to share the results, Allison? She's interested, but we don't know. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see. What was number one? Biggest one is jowls. Jowls? I jowls. understand that one. Yeah. <laughs> That's that would be mine, too. Probably understandable. Number two is? Lips. 
lips. Three. Would be cheeks. Cheeks. And marionette lines tied. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you. So let's close that and let's go ahead and. Ooh, under eyes actually was right one point ahead of those. Okay. And we're going to get to all of those. So thank you so much for, for polling with us. And then let's go ahead and pull up picture number one. Is that up, Allison? No. It's gone. This is a really neat comparison um, that you all will see on your screen. Um, we're going to talk, of course, about the aging face. This is not the same person. This is a daughter and her mother. I believe it says the age is there. She's, I think, 26, mom is 64. Um, and they've just used this comparison because they have similar bone structure and eye shape, eye color, so we can kind of see how um, we might age over time in that process of, of um, what is happening. Yeah, yeah. interesting compare. I think it is interesting. And you know, one of the things that, you know, with these two, you know, there's a couple different ways we age, obviously, like the intrinsic and extrinsic aging factors. And I think because these two people are related, the intrinsic factors are the same. You want to kind of go over what those differences are? Yes, absolutely. So in our DNA or genetics, um, we uh, typically will just age in a certain way. Um, you know, maybe the skin will become a certain, uh, have certain dryness, lose certain elasticity just naturally. Um, you know, this is that type of aging that would occur if you lived in a cave and yeah. never had any other outside exposures to make the skin have um, those, you know, external changes. Yeah. If we'd all look a little bit different, if we all kind of had the perfect life, oh, yeah. we'd, all, we'd, all end up, <laughs> we'd all end up at different places. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and then, so then the other um, aspects that affect a skin are the uh, extr extrinsic changes, which we were kind of hinting to. So everything uh, about our lifestyle, you know, how well we take care of ourselves, stress levels, the sun exposure we have. Um, whether we smoke or not, and you can encourage aging. So um, we just know that every, both these aspects, uh, as time goes on, um, you know, we do lose fat uh, through the face. You know what, um, Allison, would you go to like number four? Mm -hmm. Or well, actually, I guess yeah, yeah, we can talk about that. Skin. Okay. Yeah. Kind of skipping through a little bit. Yeah. Just take you all through a little bit of anatomy of what's going on. Um, you know, in the face over time. Um, so we essentially uh, have fat in the face and, you know, not all fat is bad fat. We really need that to have nice uh, cheekbones and have volume that does uh, make us appear more youthful. Um, as we age, that uh, illustration, of course, on the right is showing the loss of fat, the separation that then causes some um, lines, creases, wrinkles, and drooping. Okay, so you can go to the muscle one now. We also lose muscle as we as we mature yeah. and grow up. Grow up. <laughs> so right again on the right side, um, this illustration is just showing how you know our muscles do atrophy. They get thinner over time. So our fillers do go in and help uh, replenish that volume. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, make it, you know, a balanced look out. a little bit more useful. Yeah, I mean that that loss of volume is one of the things that contributes to aging. We'll kind of tell, especially how it impacts the areas if y'all were interested in, um, you know, with the with the jowls particularly. I think the volume loss in the fat and the muscle is very impactful. Mm -hmm. All right, and if you want to go to the bone, yeah, this is actually really interesting. This is something a lot of people don't realize. I think is the the bone what structure. happens with the, their bony structures? Yeah. The age. I mean, first glance, just take a real good look at this. Um, the you know older lady on the right, you know, around the eye area, we have loss of bone. Also, right at the cheekbone area, the bone is receded up, um, and the mid cheek, kind of so under the cheekbone area too, is quite a bit of thinning, and on the jaw. Um, so all of that uh, recession then does make us more age towards. Yeah, the bony resorption, I think, is really important. It's, it's interesting that, um, you know, again, it's one of those things you don't understand. Like, your facial skeleton is shrinking, and so you, you combine all that together. You've got fat loss, you've got muscle atrophy, you've got gravity, you've got 
We didn't even talk about skin until that, you know? So it's just, it's kind of depressing if you're like, well, really? Like, all this stuff is happening. But it, um, but that is kind of what's happening and probably the things that are happening things, you kind of start to understand how this is happening now. Um, so let's kind of switch gears a little bit and talk about um, how, the, like, in a real patient, what's going on. So if you open it up, um, can you, do number, or wait, before you do this one, can you do number eight without doing all of them? Can you just bring up the first picture of number eight? No? Okay. Well then, oh, you know what then? Let's go to um, picture three. Yeah, I was thinking maybe that'll be That good. would be a great one, yeah. Okay. So um, this is just an interesting illustration where it's showing you triangle. The triangle of youth is on the left, essentially where uh, a, the younger person would have higher cheekbones, fuller cheeks, um, and a, a you know, very strong chin. Um, at the bottom, uh, excuse me, to the right side, we get that inverted triangle, so the upside down, where a lot of the weight then kind of goes to the bottom of the face. Um, and um, as that's happening, you know, we've lost some of the elastin, collagen. We've just obviously gone through all of our anatomy structures, seeing how they've atrophied. Um, or we've lost that fat, so, and we don't have as much of the strength and the structure uh, that we need. And uh, that's one wonderful thing that the fillers, uh, the newer fillers of today, are replenishing. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. And I think um, that, you know, if you kind of think about it, you know, children look like this. They have tiny chins and chunky cheeks. And, you know, think about a 95 year old in your head and all the, even someone like a beautiful woman with high cheekbones, all the weight of the face tends to fall. And so a lot of this is about creating volume um, and softness and getting some of that back gradually and slowly though. That's the one thing I should mention too, is both um, Shelly and I are very conservative injectors. Um, I think it's important when you're considering this, you know, I, I kind of treat people the way I treat myself. I like to go low and slow. I'm a big baby. Um, I want everything to look very natural. And I think that's one of the things like aesthetically, we both have a very similar view of that where um, we both believe in very subtle and gradual approaches to this. And also like almost like a teamwork approach too, because I do think it's really important, obviously to take what you're concerned about into consideration and then we work together because, you know, I think you know, I get, I know, and I know you do too, get OCD about symmetry. That's so important, um, which is why the way we treat will have you lay down and you're looking as we go. And also I think that, you know, going back to what you're saying about the triangle, making sure that things make sense between the upper half and the lower half, it needs to relate. Um, and I think that's kind of what we do, especially when we do our consults. We kind of go through that with you individually to kind of figure out where these needs are. Um, it's a journey. It is a journey, yeah. it, exactly. And every uh, visit will build on the last. Exactly, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about how we treat here at Dermatology Center of Atlanta. Um, and, you know, we, so when, once we kind of, we do the consult and our consultations um, are pretty extensive, we really kind of look at all the things we were talking about uh, with the triangle mm -hmm. and trying to explain it to you for your particular circumstance. And we try, the way at least I approach it, I think uh, Shelly does the same thing, is we try and give you a really global view of everything. And so it's not to kind of tell you like all these things are wrong, because nothing's wrong. I mean, I really think, you know, God doesn't make mistakes. Everybody's beautiful. We're just trying to kind of bring out um, your features. So sometimes it's just trying to tell you, you know, for instance, um, I think one of the big areas that people, or the number one area in our poll was jowls. Yeah. So people will come in and they'll say, can you fill my jowls? Well, you can fill the jowls, but the problem with those lines is if you fill the lines there, what happens? It's just going heavy and down. Yeah, yeah you just create weight sense. in the area of the face that's already weighty. So a lot of times it makes more sense to lift up before, so to pull before you push. Um, and I think that's really important. Um, and, you know, when we, so when we talk to you and we tell you kind of all these different things, it's more to tell you how one thing impacts another. And, you know, uh, when we look at someone, we kind of break it down into two areas, like the structure and framework of a face and the art and the middle of the frame. So if you can go back actually to picture three. Um, What's ha happening is the um, 
on the, the woman on the right, the when we talk about structure of a face, or, or when I think about the framework of the face, I'm talking about um, her mid face. Allison, if you can go to her, that one, can you use your cursor? Because I can't use my cursor, sorry. Uh, and, I'm seeing, and I'm seeing the screen kind of right below the camera, so I'm trying to kind of follow with her, so I don't know. Can you, can you move that? I can't actually see it. Oh, she can't see it. <laughs> So anyway, so it's the mid face, and I'll just I'll just point for you so you can see. But the mid face is through here, the chin, the, the jawline, and the temple, and that's kind of what we think of it as, as when we're. And you can kind of turn, turn that off since we can't point. But so, and I'll just show you on me. So it's mid face, it's temple, it's jawline, it's chin, it's the things in the periphery face that's creating a framework or a structure. This triangle, the middle triangle, as um, let me think of that as the art. In the middle of the frame and so your focus changes a little bit when you go there from maybe lifting or creating volume to um, really a, a little bit more detail oriented i look there first for vertical lines because on every one vertical lines bring you in and down so that could be your marionettes or sorry your marionettes your nasal labial folds you might have a crease or wrinkle here above your lip all those things i think contribute the deeper that line is and the more central it is, the more impactful it is. And so those are the things that we definitely look at to see, you know, when, when we need to get to that. Um, so, the, you know, those two things work together too, because you can't have a beautiful frame and no art, and you can't have a great piece of art and no frame because it's on the floor. So they really work together. And that's the purpose of when we go over a consult with you as we go through everything. Yeah. And then wrap back around to kind of go, well, where do you start? Like, what are kind of the places that make sense for you to start your journey? Um, you know, a lot of people ask about how frequently you need to treat, and we typically will treat about every four to six months, you know, two to three times a year. If you're coming in that frequently, that's fine. The nice thing about this is you get to control the rate of change. Actually, that's a great segue into a picture eight. Um, I'll show you a patient who, and this is kind of, her journey, you know, when you come in and how often you come in, that's kind of up to you. You know, the reason we tell you not to go more than six months is these fillers are an investment. And sometimes, you know, you might come in and love your results, which is great. And maybe you don't come in for a year, year and a half because you're happy, which is fantastic. The problem is, is at that point, you're starting over. It makes a lot more sense if you're going to start this journey to treat and just kind of keep things looking even because you're not going to get to everything every visit there's a lot of different areas as i think you can tell that we can treat um, so this woman um, you can kind of see her gradual improvement after one syringe of volume is the second picture full correction with just volume which is the mid face filler we should mention that that's yeah. the big bulky one um, cheeks and chins especially and then after where she's treated several different areas and you know, this is her journey. Your journey might be different. You know, I have some patients that are in a hurry. They've got a wedding coming up, and they want to go fast. Right. You know, um, there are natural stopping points to fill. Or sometimes we just have to tell you, you know, that's enough for today. Because, um, like we said, you know, hyaluronic acid loves water. So there is this kind of like almost microscopic, if you will, swelling that happens under the skin. Not that you can see it necessarily, but. Um, when you're treating sometimes more delicate areas, for instance, under the eyes or around the lips, you have to be really respectful of that and not put too much in, in each session. Sometimes it's better to take a break for, say, four weeks or so and then go back to the area. If it's an area that really bothers you and you want to move on it, that's fine and we'll help you do that. Most of my patients, I think most of yours too, are super conservative though, and I think we feel like just moving in a pace, you know, I think we show them the, you know, the mirror right after each that's session. Right. So we go for a natural uh, appearance, natural approach. We want someone to, to feel uh, like they're refreshed, you know, that they, uh, no one notices that you've had much anything done, that they just look like um, they had a good night's sleep. And yeah, that you're rested. That's so, right. Yeah, and I think that's kind of important. And, you know, we do a lot of things to kind of help keep your treatment comfortable. We've talked about topical numbing. Um, we use a lot of ice. Um, we, we treat happy. We've yeah, this. we have we kind of for distraction. Which, it sounds silly, but it works. Like we have on you, and it kind of helps distract your brain. We also use a uh, cannula sometimes instead of needles. These are, um, I'll show you. They look like needles. So this is the cannula. We use a tiny. I don't know if you can kind of see these. But I'll show you. But you use a tiny needle, tiny, to just kind of um, create a small opening in the skin. Say, 
um, maybe at the mid cheek or here to, to go underneath the eye. And then this, I don't know if you can see. Nope, you can't. Well, maybe a little bit. Anyway, this is the cannula and it's not sharp. It's, I can't cut myself with it. And so what ends up happening is with one injection point, you can really safely and gently treat a big broad area. Say like, um, let's see if you can see like in this, if you did one injection point, you could treat this whole cheek. Um, if you did one injection point in the mid face, you could kind of gently and safely treat under the eye area. So, you know, depending on what we're treating, we'll use a needle, a cannula, not one thing can treat everything. So um, I just wanted to share that with you as well. Um, I think there were some questions, Allison, to... Um, yes, what is the best kind of filler for vertical lip lines? So uh, someone's asking about vertical lip lines and fillers there. So, and that, I think, depends. You know, if, if they're a little bit deeper, I might start with Restylane. Um, I like the precision of that. If they're fine, what do you like? Definitely Restylane is kind of the one I would start with. Uh -huh. And then Novella, if they're, if they're super fine, if they're super, um, you know, very barely there type of thing because it's such a light filler, it's up high in the skin. So I think that's a nice one. Sometimes we go between them, quite frankly, as we go through sessions, we might go for um, precision and then softness. So it really depends. And, um, and again, the nice thing is you don't have to know specifically which filler you're asking for when you call in to ask for a filler. Can fillers leak out of your pores months after injection? <laughs> no. So the next question is, filler, fillers can leak out of your pores months after injection. So no, they can't. Um, the fillers are actually uh, integrated in your skin with hyaluronic acid, and you do get, like we talked about, that collagen building. Now, you can get too much filler. So there is something called blue hue. So sometimes misplaced filler that's too high in the skin or there's too much of the filler can create this um, almost blue hue to the skin. And there's, um, you can correct that. Yeah, you can correct that with hyaluronic if that has happened, but that's um, not common either. I think there was a question about that you asked or you had earlier about was it tear troughs or, or brows. I think someone asked if you, if you can lift a brow with filler and you, um, to a degree. So it's interesting we start talking about brows is you can use fillers like above, but we've done that. And you know, and that actually does create a little bit of lift. However, it doesn't affect lid laxity. And so sometimes people are confused. They go, if my brow is better position, it's going to help. But really what they don't like is that the lid is heavy. Yes. And that's different, mm -hmm. right? That becomes yeah. surgical. And so um, sometimes that's really where I think Shelly and I can help you and kind of evaluate what's really going on. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, believe it or not, treating the temples with Voluma, so we can use Voluma treat temples and that creates the lift too. So there are different ways that you can address it. There's limits. Tomorrow we're going to talk in our new about Botox. I didn't see that. Um, tomorrow we did, uh, we'll talk about Botox and you can do a little bit of a brow lift with Botox and I'll talk to you about that tomorrow and Shelly will join me then as well. Um, but, you know, again, it's, it's limited if you're trying to overcome the laxity. I have a question about lasers and fillers. We talked about lasers yesterday in our and um, whether that can affect your fillers. So we just really ask that you spread, the fillers won't melt away or anything, but we do to ask you to wait about four weeks between the treatments if you're doing both. Mm -hmm. Um, any other questions? Other types of procedures, how long between those, like facials? Uh, a couple of weeks, for, a couple of weeks for facials, usually two to four weeks when you're pretty safe for most things. Lasers are the ones we ask you about with the longest between. Uh, people often ask also about longevity of fillers, and I think that's important too. And the different fillers do last different lengths of time. And so, you know, anywhere from four to six months to a year and a half, two years. However, it also depends on where you're using it and the amount you're using it. Because we tend to be more, I'll say, conservative, and you're not, and we're, we tend to treat a lot of different areas at one time so that it doesn't look obvious. In other words, you know, each of these syringes is one cc, it's a fifth of a teaspoon. If you take that fifth of a teaspoon and dump it in one area, people will know you did something, right? Mm -hmm. But if you spread it out everywhere, the results are subtle. And so this is why too, you know, we're not gonna treat every single area every single time. And this is why the, I think just thinking it more conceptually as far as you're coming in every two, like two to three times a year, every four to six months versus how long is this individual filler lasting is a better way to process this because again, we might treat something, a lot of times I'll use, for instance, Voluma, we use that with cheeks and chins, yeah. So typically, so that if you read the mice type, it says it's going to last a year and a half to two years. 
But if you're treating really conservatively, the clinical effect might be gone sooner than that. But then as you build on it, you progressively get a longer lasting result, if that makes sense. Um, biggest risks for fillers, that's a great question. Answer some of that. Um, well, the, the biggest risk for fillers with um, hyaluronic acid is just important that we don't um, inject into any of the vasculature of the, the face and we're at the correct depth. So that's why it's really important that you come to a um, skilled provider in that injection process. And we're very careful to avoid those from knowing our anatomy and being cautious on each injection. Yeah. I agree. Um, but really, the most commonly would be bruising. Yeah, sure. that's most bruising. And the, the biggest risk is that. The I biggest risk. And then, you know, I think the other thing is um, you, know, you can get, so initially after the injection, most people, I think, were absolutely fine. Yeah. Like there's, um, you could go to the public, so no one's going to know you did anything. But you do have a risk of if, bruising, usually it's pretty small stuff. Occasionally, you can get a big bruise. If you get a big one, we have a PB laser. We're happy to zap that for you. Um, in addition, sometimes you can get a little bit of swelling, especially if you treat around the lips, so that's important. That can last one to two weeks. Not bad uh, at all, but just a little bit of minor swelling. And then rarely you can get um, these nodules that occur even weeks or months after treatment. This is less than 1% of the time. Um, the vascular compromise that Shelley talked about is even less frequent than that, so you're right, most serious, but very you know, knock on wood, we haven't seen that, uh, very rare. But the nodules I have seen, rarely, these are things you feel, you don't see them. I always point it out to explain that to people, just because I don't want you to, months down the road, kind of get this little lumber bump, and go, what is that? Usually, again, I have one once under my chin, and it just felt like a little cyst, and then I realized, oh my gosh, I have one of those filler nodules, and I kept meaning to treat myself, because they're all treatable, and they all resolve, um, and I kept forgetting, but I would just feel it at night when I washed my face, and then eventually it just went away by itself. I'm like, oh, all right, whatever. Yeah. But, um, but it is important. I uh, don't want to poo poo that at all. So if you have it, we can help you. Sometimes those yeah. are important. Yeah, and yeah exactly. Um, any other questions before we move on? How long before an event should I start treating? How long before an event should you start treating? It depends on, that's such a big, hard question, at least two weeks. At least two weeks. But uh, more time is better. Like I, I have to, the happiest I get is like people are getting ready for weddings if they give me a year. Yeah. I'm like, or six months. Because then you can also get comfortable yourself. Like, what do you want to see? I think that's so important. After each syringe, we'll show you in a mirror where you are and you make those calls as far as do I want more? Should I do more? Should I do less? Like, what are we going to do? How, how are we going to approach this? And we just talk it through. Absolutely. I would tell them we go through some before and afters, Dr. Ray. Yeah, let's do that real quickly. I know we're running out of time. I do want to tell you all, for those of you that are ha hanging on for how to win the fillers, yeah. we are giving away free filler. But um, actually, I think because Shelly's here, let's give away two. So I'm going to say, why not Shelly? And um, the way you win that is to text fillers, F I L L E R S, to 31996. You can also email fillers, F I L L E R S, to dca.marketing at dermatology atlanta.com to enter to win. Um, so, those are two ways. There's also, I think, in the chat box, correct? There's a direct link this time, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, direct link in the chat box. So, if you click on the chat box, you can see that. Um, but then, for those of you who want to hang on, if you want to just see some quick before and afters, we'll just go over. These are just a few of our patients. Um, and I think they're just nice examples. And they're also nice examples of individual journeys, mm -hmm. you know, of how people choose number nine. Um, if you have it, this is your screen. We're seeing all your screen. We're seeing your, we see all your. Oh. <laughs> this is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> There she is. Sorry. Okay. So on the uh, left is one of our patients, and on the right, actually, this is a great patient because she's done our two new zooms. She's done lasers, and she did she did some halo, yeah. um, and then she also did some fillers. And this was her progress over the course of I think about a year, year and a half. And again, so she didn't get from point A to point B overnight. This was a gradual improvement. But you can also kind of imagine too, if she suddenly stopped doing fillers, her results are not going to just disappear and go away. Um, she gets to retain a lot of that. She's definitely had collagen building. So she chose tomorrow, I don't want to do this anymore. She's going to be fine. She's not going to revert back to picture one 
over at that age, or even when they slowly wear off. So she's going to, um, you know, continue to age, but from a better point. Um, there's another patient, number 10. Yeah, another nice progression. And these are, you know, these are people's personal choices of, you know, how much, what do you want to do? When do you want to treat again? Um, how comfortable are you with, with this change or that change? You know, um, we kind of, again, work as a team with you so that you're comfortable. I mean, the most important thing, and I think the reason I love it, I think we too, is like, it's like when you look in someone's eyes and they see themselves differently, there's, it just makes you feel great. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like if, they're, if you feel better and you can do better in your life um, and you're a better mom or better at work or just feel better in general, I mean, that's kind of, um, it's our, our small contribution to the world is that you know, we hopefully make you feel more confident in yourself and better about things that are frustrating to you. But with this woman, she's about, again, another, I'd say maybe year long journey of her choices. And, you know, we did not get from, again, point out, I wish we had the progression pictures on her too, but um, it's just how she chose to go through it. She looks great. And so, you know, she was actually coming in more frequently in the beginning. And then as things get better, she just kind of spaced the treatments out. So you're probably a couple times a year now. Um, and then lastly, a lot of you have asked about lips. Um, I know we're a little bit over, but um, I just want to sh quickly show you um, some lips because people get really sometimes so nervous when you use the word lips and fillers in one sentence. Um, I actually had a patient the other day tell me uh, she saw an ad for a lip filler and it scared her. And so this was obviously someone trying to, uh, an ad that was trying to promote lip filler, but she was like, it's too much. Like, I don't want that. And I was just wanting to show you that you can do these things. And this is kind of how we approach it super slowly and trying to get you a really natural looking result. Um, and again, to your comfort level, we can show you where you are and you can always add more. My approach is less is more. You can always go back and put more in. If you put too much in, it's really, it's hard. You can take it out, but it's hard. Um, okay, that's a beautiful subtle change. That's that's that that picture. Yeah, it's nice. Okay, well, let's wrap things up a little bit. Um, Shelly, thank you so much. Hi, All right, so appreciate you having us today. Absolutely. Yeah. So we are going to wrap up the, this, uh, this uh, main Zoom. I want to thank you all for joining us. I hope you learned something about fillers. If you have more questions, I encourage you to schedule a consultation with myself or with Shelly where we can kind of go over all the ins and outs. Um, don't forget to enter fillers to three. What was the number? 31996. 31996. So don't forget, so you can enter to win free filler. Uh, in addition, you are registered to win in our 20th anniversary giveaway. So tune in on October 20th today and Zoom. You won't, you won't need a registration. It will just be a click, correct? Allison? Yes, Allison says yes. And um, don't forget to purchase your 20% off gift certificates. That sale is going on now. The link is in our website. Is it in the chat as well? To the gift certificate sale? Mm -hmm. Yes. And the link is in the gift, is in the chat to the gift certificate get certificate sale as well. Um, don't forget on October 20th is our one day skincare sale. That's gonna be really exciting. We're actually gonna be talking about products the day before on October 19th in Zoom, so you make sure you wanna tune in then. Um, in addition, we will, um, what's that? Friends. What is that for? Tell your friends. What if they text it? Oh, I thought it was a text, I'm sorry. <laughs> so anyway, um, so yes, tell your friends about the sale, tell your friends about um, everything else that is going on this week. We've got a ton of stuff. All the information is on our website and we hope to see you tomorrow where we're gonna be talking about Botox. So thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate your time and your attention. Sorry that we went over. Bye.